and we are live. So, hello, um, everyone. This is uh, Kowloon Tong Exchange Learning Stories. Um, our first, I think all of us, it's our first attempt at a Google Hangouts on air, but it's a, a great chance for us to get together from a number of different schools. So um, my name is Andrew Chu, and I'm at the American International School. And I think I'll just pass the microphone around to everybody um, as we go around. So uh, I'll, I'll go to Ryan next. Okay, so my ah, our first glitch, Ryan, you're cutting out. <laughs> cutting out? Okay, uh, so I'm Ryan. International. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm the PYP coordinator at Kingston International Kindergarten. I'm John, principal of Upper <laughs> Great. So that's Kingston. Hello, everybody at Kingston. We'll move on um, to Dion. Hi, my name is Dion. Um, I work at Daily S School of Canada, and I teach grade ones. Fantastic. Thank you, Dion. Uh, we'll move on to Matthew and Amber. Hi, I'm Matt. Um, I teach EC2 here. That's the four and five year olds at the American International School. And I'm Amber. I teach uh, grade one junior, which is uh, kindergarten, the five and six year olds at American International School. Brilliant. Um, and we'll move to Bruce. Hi, I'm Bruce. Uh, I'm at Hong Kong Academy out in Sai Kung, and this is my second year in Hong Kong. Uh, I'm the technology integration coach, so working pre-K through grade five. Fantastic. Um, so it, it's great to have everybody uh, on board. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen quickly. Hopefully this will work. Um, and yeah, fantastic mirror effect there. Um, so this is us learning stories. So the idea of this meeting came about because um, there's obviously a lot of movement to uh, capture learning in many different ways. Some people call it portfolios. Some people call it, uh, you know, using specific tools like Seesaw. Um, and so today we're really looking at learning, uh, capturing learning using technology. And uh, we've got a quick sort of agenda. We've done our hellos and intros. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to take the mic for a little bit and just uh, put in my sort of two cents. Um, I've gone on this journey for a little while doing portfolios. Um, I should have said I, I uh, have been teaching computer science in high school, but um, in the last couple of years, I've been working as the ed tech coordinator uh, across uh, kindergarten all the way through uh, grade 12 at the American International School. Um, and uh, so what I would like to share today is about this idea of moving from portfolio to uh, the story of learning. and it comes about really because uh, I've been using portfolios and they've been transformational in the way that I um, have been uh, teaching, getting students to, to capture their work, get, getting such insight into their learning, seeing things that previously were, were, was not visible that I really wanted to share it with, uh, with, with everybody really. Um, the difficulty is when I found that when I started talking about portfolios, people had specific ideas of what a portfolio is. So most of the time when you mention the word portfolio, people think about exhibition. So kids or, or students exhibiting their best works, and these are probably finished works. They're sort of exemplars, and this audience is this idea of uh, the public or um, out to an employer. You know, that your art portfolio might be, you know, uh, to get a client on board professionally. So this idea of portfolio seems tainted with this idea that you're really only showing your or collecting your best works and they're all finished and polished. Um, but when you start talking to teachers, they then start thinking that there's this idea of assessment as well. You can have an assessment portfolio. And in that, you're really trying to see if a student has completed their learning objectives. So you're trying to gather information uh, and evidence about their learning and their understanding. It might be that finished work because traditionally we get the kids to hand us in some finished work or we look at that final piece that we assign to them and we decide have they met the learning objectives. But as technology has made more things available and visible where they previously weren't accessible, 
I believe that that evidence comes more in, in terms of process and capturing what they're doing. So in this sense, an assessment portfolio has a specific audience as the teacher or the person assessing. But when, you, when students start really working on their portfolios for assessment or for exhibition, they start to realize that they're collecting things and evidence in their process along the way, and that's really valuable. And that really helps them with their learning and, and their processing of everything. So it actually becomes also a learning workspace for them. And so within a learning workspace, this is where it's really for the student and, and the learner. You know, they're really capturing their thoughts, their ideas. It's just like their notebook, what you might have had a scrapbook beforehand. And all of that process that they go in, that goes into that task that they're trying to achieve gets captured. And as they use the workspace, they then, you know, organize things better. It helps with their processing. So they're able to, for example, put down their thinking uh, they're able to put down the ways that they're doing things and they start to reflect and realize um, things that they might not have realized before. And so this is where it's been a, a very powerful thing for some of my students when they really have been using portfolios as a workspace, you see that they really grow in how they're working. So when I, I, I don't like to talk about them as portfolios anymore. I like to talk about it as learning capture, as these three things. You know, if kids are working in their workspace and they're capturing all of their learning and their process and everything because it's helpful to them. It becomes very rich stuff that we can use to assess. And uh, some of the best work ends up being on display and on exhibition. Um, and some of that might be process and not just a completed product. Um, and so there's a whole lot of um, overlaps in there. There's the idea of ownership, the idea of organizing your work. And, and that's where it becomes complicated. So when we talk about the story of learning and capturing the story of learning, we've got those three pieces, but I think a really insightful thing that we've been able to, to garner from uh, interviewing teachers and, and students here is that learning isn't really, all, uh, isn't really all just about that work, but it's a lot more about the people, the relationships, the events that go on, the places in which they happen. So if you think back to all of your biggest learning sort of the things that you remember from your learning, where it happened, the people that it happened with, those relationships play a really big role. And so where I'm at with all of this is, um, instead of talking about portfolios and capturing work and learning, we're talking about how do we capture actually the story of someone's learning. And that includes these things about workspace, which leads into sort of assessment spaces, which leads into exhibition, but around that, the thing that might not also be being captured, you know, digitally is that people and the relationships piece. And I think that's so key. And so we've got, it's complex because you've got multiple audiences. And along the way, there's so much that we have to learn uh, as teachers, but also as, as learner. So what do we need to learn? Well, students need to learn about communication. As they start a portfolio, they don't know, well, when they start capturing all this stuff, they don't know how to communicate things out in the best ways. They need to learn about collaboration, how they organize that work for different people, for the teacher or for a public audience, or is it private? They need to, uh, and in doing all of this, they learn a lot more about how they're thinking, how they're acting and all that metacognition um, and how they work in the knowledge community. Um, and that's all the citizenship piece. And so for me, that's where it's really powerful. Um, and I think, I hope that we hear, you know, some of how everybody's moving in these, uh, in these directions. So that's where I'm at with it. Um, this is the last slide. I'm going to, I won't go on much for longer, but the idea of this learner. So if, if we look at learning, learning has to be social, um, or, or, or the social aspect and the support around that is, is so important. So when we make visible things about the learner, and we empower things like the teacher and the parents, they get empowered to help the learner in better ways. Um, but then there's, there's more than that as we're capturing our learning and our learning story. Obviously, over the years, the learner, you know, they, they see a number of teachers and meet a number of different peers. So it's not good enough if we just have one teacher pioneering portfolios or something, learning capture, and then the next year it doesn't, you know, it doesn't continue on. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And I think that's what's happened at the American International School for, for a little bit. You've got pockets of really good use of portfolios, and then you've got years where 
or, or subjects and, and spots where it's not used at all. So really, I feel like it needs to be a centralized approach so that we can really take into account all of these things. And as, as all of this learning becomes visible, um, all of these different uh, parts of our community, all these different people, these relationships that we have, um, really can help empower um, the learning. So not only does it help the learner learn more about themselves, but it, it empowers all these other people to help the learner, to support the learner, to be part of the learner's journey. Um, so that's that's really what I wanted to share and talk about and start us off. Um, so I'm going to move on now. I'm going to pass uh, on the, the mic uh, over to uh, Dion. Okay. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, Dion. Sorry. So Andrea has lots of great points. Um, so this year, the grade ones, we've been having one-to-one -one, um, iPad devices uh, and it's been a lot better and easier. Sorry, my phone's just ringing. Sorry, hold on. Is Chan speaking? Uh, supposedly. Is, is, this, is, is this this them? Sorry. Um, yeah, so that has helped us uh, quite a bit. We started using Seesaw as an online platform and we've introduced it as a portfolio um, for them to be uploading some of their work and sharing some of their work with their parents and their classmates. What was very nice that uh, Mr. Waller actually introduced it as a uh, like kind of like a kid friendly Facebook. So they were really into that they were able to like each other's um, work and they were able to comment on each other's work. And then we brought it up to, to the uh, digital citizenship and how we should be uh, commenting only nice things, things that you would like to be hearing. Um, also things that they can comment is like how they can improve, uh, what did they like about so uh, we ask them to be as specific as possible. Uh, we also use it for assessments. Uh, we've had some simple assessments and then they would upload some of their products and then um, do a little recording because what uh, as a teaching grade one it was hard to be conferencing with all of these students and the other students are right behind you and trying to talk to you so then if they were able to record everything on the iPad it was a lot easier um, and a lot uh, quieter as well uh, what else have we used? We, I also use it as a journal entry. So, so for example, uh, when they come back from a holiday, what did they do, things like that, or a simple journal entry as in how would you stay healthy? We just had a healthy lifestyle day. Um, the parents are also very engaged. Uh, I tend to take a lot of pictures now and then try to upload videos instead of uh, picture after picture. Um, and also the good thing about Seesaw is you can add other teachers into it. I don't have the paid version right now, but I know for the paid version you can add more than one teacher. So right now the PE teacher and I are on it and she's also been using it to upload um, health videos, healthy tips, and all of the students' work. Uh, a lot of the times the students don't even think that it is an assessment, but uh, we have marked it as an assessment and they are more engaged and willing to be doing it that way yeah so that's how we've been using it in grade one you know I, do you use um do you use google classroom as well or do you kind of use seesaw no as as seesaw for the younger ones we find seesaw is a lot easier to use and to manage, especially when you ha the teacher has the control to approve what they write or what like or what they post on. So the teacher has the control of it. Whereas I think um, in the you, classroom you can't right? if you're sharing let's have the opportunity to comment on what you share as well. Yes, so a lot of the times, for example, the assessments or any products that I get them to do, I do a, uh, my, a teacher example first, and then the students follow along, and at least even the parents, the parents know what I am expecting and if their child was able to do it as well. Yeah. And are there any, any, uh, are there any sort of thoughts about how 
a student would progress on in the next few years. So if they use, if they start with CISO uh, first, where do they go from there? Um, well, at our school right now, it's only grade ones. That is one-to-one -one iPad device. Uh, the grade twos have a class set, uh, but they share with all of the other five teachers, other five grade two classrooms. But next year, they are get all getting one-to-one, -one and they're all on board on Seesaw. And our school is also trying to get the paid version, so hopefully they can be bringing up their portfolio up to the, as they grow older, the higher grades. Yeah, so it should be keep stayed and maintained. Fantastic. Are there any questions from any of the other uh, presenters? I've also, sorry, I just uh, remembered uh, our kindergarten teachers have also been using it to be tracking learning skills, but uh, I think this one you might need to have the paid version as well, which I have not had a chance to try. They are giving a two month uh, free trial, which I plan to start maybe starting May, so then I can last to the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that um, the teachers that are using it, are they seeing it being very useful? Has it been transformational? Has it just been another tool? Yeah, it's it's pretty useful, and it, the good thing also is like you can uh, turn on I think the camera feature, so you can immediately ca uh, capture what they're doing and then comment on it right away. Uh, you can also see separate it as in the students, so then you would only be seeing certain students that have been posting and what you've written about them. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, uh, have, 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 you, have they been engaging amongst each other a lot, um, giving a lot of feedback amongst each other? How's that experience yeah, been for you? It has, but obviously we have to let, uh, give class time. But some of the, the students actually go home and they are commenting on each other's work as well. So it's, it's really like an online digital citizen community. Uh, some of the students are actually bugging me. They're like, oh, we did something really cool today. Are you going to post it, I was like, yes, but please just give me a night because <laughs> I need to make it. I usually make it into iMovies, so it's a lot easier to post it all together. Yeah. So they, they're really engaged in this online platform. Parents are as well. Um, so yeah, it's awesome. Um, so the kids have access to other students' uh, Seesaw pages when they're at home? Or are they on like the Facebook Yes. Account? Actually, it, it should be their parents' account. So when you sign up the kids and you can send home letters, um, it's a parent uh, QR code that they can be scanning in and they are logged in as a parent. But I, I find that a lot of my students are commenting on their behalf. So it might not be the parents. Oh. that is on it at home because in the class then they have a class code because as a student then you can see all of your classmates post but as a parent account you can only see my post and their child's post so the kids are locking on their own posts then uh oh yeah how do they see no oh right sorry that maybe that's why they can comment on my post and what I post and their child's post. So it's more like a parent account. Oh yeah, maybe that's why. Oh, that that's making sense. <laughs> but they comment on each other's posts in class. I because they can see everyone's as a student account. And then is there something because we use seesaw as well. That's why I because I, mm -hmm. I have my kids commenting on each other's posts as well, but they often don't know to go back and look at the comments. Or that there was a comment made. Is there a? a, a did you, have you seen anything where there they might should be like? There's a notification that they would be getting, but my kids don't check it as well. But if they go back to what they post, they would be able to see all of it. It's just like Facebook, all of those notifications, mm -hmm. but they don't. Yeah, they don't have the habit because even like would get a notification, so mm -hmm. they don't get to see the comments until they click into the post that they. Posted. 
And when do the parents, because I haven't seen the parent account at all, so I have no idea what theirs looks like. I probably should try. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I've seen it all. Do they, the parents see the comments that the other students might post on their child's work? Or uh, good question. I'm not too sure about that either. Maybe we should sign them yeah. as a parent to check that out. I, I can I can add to that. Um, yeah, definitely the parents. It's it again. It's like Facebook. So um, when a parent comments, um, the students will see what the parent comments. They can also see what other students comment. So in that oh. sense, yeah, it is it is a lot like that. Um, but as you said earlier, the students can only see other students when they are in okay. the student okay. realm or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Okay. That's why I was curious of how, how secure the parent one is and what the kids can Yeah, the, the parents can only see their own child's work and the comments that have been added to that. Um, and the same thing with uh, the, I mean, you can, you, there's different settings, but the, generally you set it all up so that everything gets approved by a teacher or any teacher that's assigned to that class. So any comment, any, um, anything that's posted up, if it hasn't been done by a teacher, it has to get teacher approval first. So that is that safeguard between, you know, before it goes out to the, to the parents. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious exactly how much the parents saw because when the kids will comment, sometimes their spelling is off, or you know. But I'll still approve it, so I wasn't sure if the parents saw that or what they would say. Nobody's ever said anything. <laughs> um, you yeah, can also I've, get them to record it. Sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've set up just a parent account for myself, just and and chosen a kid just so i can play around with the environment and see how it actually really works and i did that once i actually did it once because a parent was having trouble so i i create i approved myself as a parent for that one child just to see what the environment was what it was doing for that person that was having trouble great great um thank you very much dion i know you you probably wanted to get going by four o'clock. So if, if you wanted to head off any time, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Too. Have a good holiday. Thanks, Dion. And if you. I, yep. you're, not getting, you're not getting to see the rest of, of us talk, we've been using Seesaw for, this is our second full year. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me and I'm happy to talk with you about it. Okay, thank you so much. Happy sure. Easter. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Great, fantastic. So um, I'll move on now. We'll pass the mic over to uh, Matthew and so Matt and Amber are working at the American International School, and they've been using it a fair bit in the in the early childhood area. Yeah. All right. Let's see if the screencasting works for us. Um, just give us one sec. There. Can you see our slides there? I can see myself. <laughs> oh, how about now? No. Stop sharing. Is it? Let's see. I still just see Andrew. Huh. And I see myself now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we, we can see our slides. So you can't see now. Do you see them? Not yet. <laughs> okay. It's uh, probably sharing the wrong window then. Yeah, Try yeah, yeah. this instead. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Is that good? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so at AIS, um, we're currently exploring it with ages four to six. Um, we got heavier use in some classes than others. Um, we're just sort of trying it out and um, different levels of sharing. Some classes are sharing with parents, um, some aren't right now. Um, we're gonna try the Seesaw for schools. Um, but it, it's been quite interesting so far, um, especially from getting the student perspective on things. Um, one big factor for us is, is that it, it, it promotes independence um, with really young learners. Um, getting, them, getting them to take ownership um, is, is not that hard, but being able to um, get them independent is, is a big deal. Um, if they can do more things on their own, then um, they don't need quite as much support from the one or two teachers that are in the room. Um, so uh, 
it shifts the focus from the teacher's focus to the to the student, the teacher's perspective to the student's perspective, and we find that's that's quite big. Um, sometimes you don't know what your students you don't know, um, and then when they start sharing something or they start talking about something or it comes out in the way they narrate about their writing, um, it, it, you 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 get some powerful insight into what they've done. Um, and also, they, they're very supportive of each other. As soon as somebody's figured it out, as soon as somebody's an expert, um, you very quickly have them passing on that knowledge to others. Um, we've had students uh, recording how-to videos for building with Lego, other things. Um, I, I tried out a how-to video myself. Um, I still see the kid, like this was back in September now, I still see the kids going back and watching it. Um, I haven't tried it a lot, but um, like Dion was saying, it, it sort of is like a, a Facebook and a YouTube uh, combined. You've got this powerful, safe platform for um, the students to share the things that excite them and to um, consume some of the um, media that's produced by their peers. Um, so another big, big thing for us is literacy. Yeah, this has been uh, really great to give the kids an audience with when they're doing their writing. Often I'll confer with kids, but I can't get to everyone, and I don't always see all of their writing. And they they know um, I started sharing with parents right away, and I approve everything. Uh, and we often will use it. Um, they'll they'll go out and do their read their story, and come back in, and we'll watch the stories that they wrote um, they read on Seesaw on the big screen and they'll they know that other kids might see it and it's going to their parents as well so it gives them that audience and they're motivated and more excited to really uh make their writing more advanced and add as much as they can to it so it's pretty interesting and i get a chance to listen to it's also kind of a, an extra little conferring for me i kind of get an idea of oh uh, what what they've used that i've told them and what they haven't used kind of an assessment as well so it's been great um, and they are very independent as well when they're recording themselves. So they go out into this shared area that we have, and they this is actually a picture of them recording their how um, their time capsules that was their assessment for the social studies unit we just did, and they explained what they put in their time capsules. And I didn't really have to do anything. I mean, I came out and took these pictures, but they were doing the entire recording on their own and then I'll go back and watch it. And for these ones, we actually watched them as a whole group as well so they could watch each other. And again, it gives them a purpose and an audience, which is great. It's been great for literacy and reading, writing, and just about, they, they love to do it for every, pretty much everything. It's interesting to watch them talk about their work too because um, with the younger kids, what we hear a lot is, 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 is sort of advanced babbling in a way. Um, they practice, they try out different sentences. So they'll they'll say a sentence once and then they'll say the same sentence and change one word and say it again and change another word. Um, and so it, it, it again comes back to giving them that audience um, so that it, it encourages them. Um, I actually got to listen in on some of these kids as they were sharing and it was really powerful um, to hear things from their perspective. Um, and and I, think, I think a lot of adults don't realize um, how much goes on in a, in a young child's life um, and how much is going on in their mind. Uh, it's, it's quite a big insight. Mm -hmm. um, for downstairs, uh, our younger learners, um, we've created these iPad recording stations. Um, we build them, built them out of cardboard and make do. Um, but the reason we did this is, is I'm sure you've experienced, if, if you're the, the only teacher in the room and you've got 20 kids that all want to read their book to you, there's no way you can possibly hear all those books. And they're, they're genuinely all great books. Um, so we took the time to train them, um, to teach them how to use these tools. Um, and so now they just grab an iPad, they go find one of the recording stations, wherever it is, um, and they, they read their book. Um, and, and, you know, they're, they're not all great at the beginning, um, but you end up getting really powerful stories. And so um, sometimes when they take a book home and the time it takes from writing it to bringing it home, they've forgotten what the actual book is about. Um, and so parents don't get to hear um, the wonderful things that we know um, they're thinking about and the way they're processing. Um, so this has been a, a very powerful shift for us. Um, one of the big sort of realizations and observations that's come out of this is 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 that it, it provides a lot more visibility and, and really things are messy. Um, I think as teachers sometimes we try to make things, you know, look neat and tidy and, and we sort of show the end product. Um, but one of the benefits and also one of the um, sort of issues you need to navigate is that um, it exposes the messiness of learning. Um, and so you see a lot of the mistakes, you see a lot of the failures, um, you'll see a lot of behaviors that maybe 
um, weren't talked about or weren't shared uh, before. Uh, and so it, it's important that you take the time to let the students make these mistakes and, and really invest the time in um, giving them the feedback they need so they get better. Um, but also parent education um, is going to be critical. And this is an area where we're going to need to develop and grow um, just so that we have parents understanding that this is a workspace. Um, this isn't a, a polished, um, you know, showcase. Sure, some of that will be in there, but you're going to see a lot of stuff that represents the growth, that represents the actual learning. Mm -hmm. um, and so teaching parents how to speak with their kids about that learning um, is going to be really important and I think really powerful. Um, it'll really help promote uh, our practice. Mm -hmm. And reflect on their kids' work instead of uh, criticize or because um, I've, I've had to talk to some parents about what they comment on the kids because the kids can read what their parents wrote and just let them know that this is this is a platform for encouragement and and really to give them some advice and support but not completely <laughs> don't be too critical yes, too fast be careful <laughs> yeah so you'll see a lot of this um, when they first start um, they, they'll call them typhoons tornadoes piles um we we have a limit on maybe five typhoons and then all right time to describe another weather pattern um also the audio they'll record might attach to it might be total nonsense um is i think it's important to put some of this in their portfolio to let, to be a bit reflective and think okay that was fun you made some people laugh that's that's a valid you know a valid reason to to make something but let's look at what you're trying to do here. Um, if, if you're doing the same thing again and again, maybe we can uh, grow from that. Mm -hmm. um, start recording their books, but sometimes it's not quite right. Um, a lot of the books turned out upside down. They chopped off half the book with um, the cardboard. Um, so we had to take a, a lot of a lot of mm -hmm. baby steps um, um, and make a lot of mistakes to, before they got good. Yeah, it took a while. A lot of watching what we wrote and what we did, what we Yeah. <laughs> Because they'll do it. Like, okay, <laughs> what does this look like? <laughs> We've also had kids figure out how to annotate their own work. Um, three or three and four year olds learn how to type their names, um, and now we're learning to type other things as well. Um, they figure that out really quick because they they want to share. Um, so some of the things we're thinking about for the future, moving forward now, is um, uh, how how do we pass this data on? If they if they leave the school, how do they get to keep take that take that with them? Because that's uh, that's an important part of their lives. And and what does it look like? Um, how do we work? moving to older students, um, at what point we stop using Seesaw or change the way we use Seesaw and have something else that also provides um, these sort of best practices that the kids are getting to uh, exposed to. Because it would be, like Andrew was saying earlier, it would be a real shame if they started learning how to share and producing content that makes other people happy or helps people learn. And then suddenly there's a drop off just because um, we're not sure what to do um, with their capacity. Um, so it's a wonderful problem to have. Um, and then um, accountability, like uh, taking the time to be reflective, um, being constructive towards each other, um, a lot of digital citizenship. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, and I mean, even maybe just going back and looking at some of their old stuff, I would love for them to look at, you know, the growth that they've made and kind of reflect on that, trying to kind of going about how to kind of create something like that. So that's, that's where we are right now. Um, anybody have questions about that? No, I, I liked your uh, recording stations. That's something I'll have to see if we can start making some of those. Yeah, I don't, have, up don't as well. have a trademark yet, so. <laughs> I'm trying to unmute you. <laughs> um, there we are. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, you're talking about uh, you know parents getting on board with uh, you know seeing the learning learning journey rather than you know the crisp finished product problems with parents uh, regarding this, um, you know, have they come and confronted you about, uh, you know, their, their child's work they thought was so much better? Uh, I've had a comment on their child's work on Seesaw, post a comment saying you could do better, kind of okay. a kind, pretty harsh comment. Yeah. And I actually had to email, and that was a lesson for me, like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that kind of a comment from a yeah. parent. And so I emailed the parents and went ahead and explained that this is, a work in progress that children are excited to share. They're still learning. I mean, these are rough drafts of writing. They're not final copies. Or, and again, they're five, six years old. There's going to be errors. There's going to be mistakes. Yeah, they might be able to do better on a story, 
but that's something that we could explain to them in a different sort of way, or we could, you know, be, we could be constructive in a way that helps them and not just, oh, you can do better and not expect the final pro project or product all the time. Yeah. And, and I think, I think it, it actually, I mean, ultimately we're going to need to welcome those um, situations as they come up mm -hmm. because it represents a mismatch between the way the children are, their, their capacity and the way parents view um, their children. Um, so it, it's actually a really good opportunity for us to educate um, parents and get them more on board. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do anticipate there'll be some parents that might really struggle with it. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, it might take some time um, because they just, they just might not be ready for it themselves. And I completely agree with that. It's, 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 it's great when at early, in the early years you get, you, you sort of, you know, parents can come on board and learn about these things and, and align themselves with what learning really looks like nowadays. I think so many parents are so lost with that kind of thing. And, and uh, when, when these small hiccups, I guess, come to the fore, I, I think that that's really powerful stuff for, for, for the parent. Well, thank you. Our pleasure. Okay, so um, uh, moving on to Bruce, unless there's other questions, anybody else? Other questions for, for, for Matt and Amber? Otherwise, moving on to, uh, on to Bruce. Saving the best for last, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, let me see if I can get slides up and running here. But it's been really interesting to hear everybody's story so far and where they are. Let me see if I share that. We go here. OK. Are people seeing slides? Yeah, perfect. OK, great. Um, so. Basically, um, I can kind of start our story about three years ago, where um, it was before I got to HKA, they uh, formed a focus group to take a look at portfolios. Um, there were a, a, a number of different reasons why they were doing that. I won't bore you with all those details, but um, basically the one thing they wanted to do when they formed that focus group is, uh, of course, come up with a purpose statement for e-portfolios. And this is, this is what they had come up with at the time. Um, and then the next thing they did from there was to establish some requirements for the tool and the process that was that was going to take place for um, the e-portfolio. So what they were looking for, they wanted it to be easy to use for everybody, students, staff, and parents. Um, it needed to match the use of the tech that was available in the classrooms. You know, we're moving more from uh, the computer lab environment to a one-to-one -one or uh, mobile devices in the classroom. We wanted it to be timely. Uh, in the past, it was just uh, portfolios that were sent home at the end of the semester or at the end of the year. So there wasn't a lot of sharing as the process was going along. Um, and then it, we, we wanted to have that ongoing interactive feedback uh, between parents, teachers, students, and so forth. Um, so what they really came up with after that was um, they chose Seesaw in pre-K through grade three. Um, the, the iPads were in use up through grade three. Um, and then in grades four and five, uh, they were decided to use Weebly blogs. Um, uh, it kind of, they were using laptops in grades four and five, or they are using laptops in grades four and five. And it's also preparing them for the upper school environment where they're gonna be having their own blogs as well. So kind of a transition between primary and, and upper school. Um, the, since, well, let me step back a little bit. So we've been using uh, Seesaw extensively, pre-K through grade three, um, all, all classes are using it. Everyone's required to use it. Um, this is our second full year using it. We have the full version. Uh, we have the school version, the paid version. Um, so it's giving us all the capabilities um, that are possible. The feedback we've been getting has been positive across the board. We, we really haven't had any negative feedback from people. Um, the teachers really enjoy it. It's easy to use. It's easy to learn. Um, there was a little bit of a learning curve, but it, it was really quite short. Um, the teachers, now that they're in the groove, they're using it, 
um, it's it just becomes a part of the way they do things. It's not a problem at all. The students really enjoy it. Um, it's very easy for the students to use, and we're using it from pre-K, so age three. Um, with the pre-Ks, the pre-K one and two, so the three and the four-year-olds, um, it's, it's guided use. Um, we're starting to show them what it's about, um, capturing their learning and then sharing that learning and, and ex helping to explain their learning and what's important and what they have. Um, explaining to them that they're, it's, they're sharing it with their parents as well, so they get excited about sharing things. Um, once we get up into kind kindergarten, we find that the kids are, after, a, you know, after they start back at school and we introduce it to them again, after a couple of times of posting something up, to Seesaw, they're able to do it independently on their own. There's really no extra guidance that's needed from the teachers. Um, the kids really like that it's student-centered as well and it's student-driven. Um, of course, teachers suggest certain things and certain pieces that should be added to Seesaw, but the students are also starting to take that ownership um, and they're wanting to put certain uh, work in there, whether it's finished or unfinished. Again, we're showing the growth. It's the learning journey that the students are taking throughout the year in their different subjects. Um, and then the probably some of the best feedback we've gotten or positive, the most positive feedback we've gotten is from the parents. They really love it. Um, they love seeing the learning as it happens. It's not something that's just talked about at parent-teacher conferences, it's just not at reporting time, it's not a portfolio that comes back once or twice a year. If something was done and posted that day, they get it right to their mobile device and they see it right then and there and they love that. Um, it's helping them continue the conversations or to continue the learning at home. They can talk with their child about something that was posted up today and, and they can show it to them on the device to remind them and then have more conversations about what it is that they did and what they learned and what they liked and things like that. Um, and we are seeing a lot of parent involvement. Um, a lot of it is just that they're seeing it and they're liking it. Um, there's not a ton of comments, um, but that's something that we're, we're looking at uh, trying to, to get more parent involvement in the way of uh, meaningful comments. And I'll talk about that in a little, in a few minutes. Um, one thing I've done uh, is just, I mean, we only have two classes per grade level, so it's its not a big task for me, but I just uh, collect some statistics um, each month just to kind of see where we are with each class. Um, basically, each class I've set up some basic folders with the, the basic subject areas. The teachers can add other folders if they want to help organize some other the content that gets added as well, but I just put in the basic subject area so that we can start taking a look at what kind of uh, items are being added and we can look at that on a monthly basis. So basically we're seeing, um, if, you, if you take a look at that, the first two columns, it's just, this is the amount in the last month. So you can see, you know, how many items have been posted in that month for that class and you can see how many parent visits have, there have been for that month for that class as well. So if you take a look at that, you can see our classes are no greater than 22 kids. Um, you know, you, you're seeing upwards of 280 parent visits, 250. Um, looks like the smallest is about 112 for 66 items that have been posted. So, you know, that's an, on average two, two parents per item. Um, this also allows me to see how, how content is being added in with subject areas. It's just kind of an overview and I can notice, okay, there's one area like you might notice there's one area that there's a zero in there. So I may just go talk with that teacher and say, hey, I noticed that, that there wasn't anything in, in the math for, for Seesaw. Um, you know, and just talk to them why that might be the case. You know, not getting on their case or we're not trying to, to um, criticize them. We're just seeing, okay, now that we're moving towards the e-portfolios, you know, we need to start thinking about documenting the learning that's going on in all subject areas and, and then maybe it's me that needs to help them to think about well how can we start getting some of that content into seesaw as well um, let's see what's the next slide um, okay so one thing we're noticing now that this that we're in our second year a lot of the teachers at the beginning of this year were after having it for a full year they're saying so are, do we still need to do paper portfolios and 
do the e-portfolios, um, a lot of teachers are saying, what's the purpose? Why do we need to do that? Um, so we said as a school in the primary that it's up to the grade level. The grade levels made the decision at the beginning of the year. If they're going to do just e-portfolios, they have to make sure that they are then documenting all the subject areas and all and as much content as they normally would with a paper portfolio as well. Um, and I would say most of our grade levels have decided just to go with the e-portfolio, whether it's Seesaw or Weebly. Um, there are still a couple of grade levels that are hanging on with the paper portfolios and they are doing both. Um, and they have their own valid reasons for wanting to do that. So we're letting them do that. Um, but I think I, uh, we're seeing as the, you know, after the first year, there was a big people or a, a big group of teachers that wanted to just switch the e-portfolio. And I think as this year is going on, we're going to see probably most, if not all of them, make that switch uh, next year as well. Um, kind of the next steps for HKA, what we're looking at, uh, a couple of things. One thing we need to really do, I think, and it's it's finding the time to do it, um, is having the teachers go back through and review and reflect the content of the items that are in Seesaw. Um, taking that overall look, you know, did I hit all the different subject or are all the subject areas um, being represented? Um, is it showing the learning and the growth of the child or is it just a Facebook taking a picture and just throwing in a lot of pictures of what kids are doing in the classroom as opposed to really showing something that they're learning and having kids explain what they understand and what their what their knowledge is. Um, so that's something I think we need to, to, to take some time to do. Um, another thing I want to try to promote again, I did it very briefly at the beginning of this year. There's a, there was a new feature at the beginning of this year um, in Seesaw, I think they call it skills. Um, so you can set it up so you can put your skills or your standards in there and then you can tag an item uh, with a particular skill. Um, and if you look at the skills view, um, we have one teacher or actually one of the grade levels has decided that they were going to fully give it a go this year and see how it goes. Um, so you can see that um, the way it, the skills view looks is you see your skills across the top. Um, as you go down uh, each column, there's each student for that particular skill and it shows you how many items have been tagged for that skill. Um, the different colors represent the star. There's a star rating. I think it's from uh, zero to four. So if it gets a, a four, it's going to be green. If it gets a three or a two, it's going to be yellow. If it gets a one, uh, or actually, I, I forget the exact colors, but basically it's a color rating. So green means they've fully met that standard with a, with a four. Um, yellow might be a two or a three, and then I think red is a one or they don't have they haven't or, or a zero um, so a teacher can take a quick snapshot look at okay well what standards have you know has so and so student met which ones haven't they met let's go back and take a look at what those items are see where they're weak and see what things they need to be reinforced on um, so i think this is something especially for those classes that are moving to being all uh, e-portfolio and no paper based this is a good way to see if they are documenting all the different skills and standards that they should be documenting in their portfolio um, and then the third thing is as we mentioned earlier is encouraging more parent commenting uh, more than just liking the comment or saying good job um, we want to start start to educate the parents a little bit more into how to comment more meaningfully and i had put together um <clears throat> excuse me a little uh, uh brochure a little handout um that we sent out to, to parents early in the year but i think we need to kind of revisit this and and maybe have a parent uh, session uh in school to kind of talk with parents about ways that they can be starting conversations at home and ways they can be commenting more meaningfully um, and I had pulled this off of, it was either the Weebly Seas or the Seesaw um, website, or I saw something posted somewhere where there was another teacher that had put uh, most of these items in, and I may have added a couple here and there, but I thought this was a really good thing to help uh, parents add some, some meaningful comments to, to their child's Seesaw uh, items. 
Um, negatives, I mean, we have really haven't run across a lot of negatives. Some things we needed to be aware of was teachers just posting general stuff for all kids. We were trying to make this focused as a, a student's, a particular student's learning journey and not making it full of announcements and things like that. Parents were getting a little annoyed when they were getting notified all the time of certain little uh, announcements all the time. Um, the other negative that, that we potentially see is that the when you have the full account, the student's information does carry over from one year to the next. Um, parents can see all the historical information. They can go back and see items that have been posted in the year before. Um, but once that class has, it's all the content is associated with one class. And once that class has been archived, you lose all the folder organization that went along with it. So the parents still see it in chronological order, but you can't search for, well, okay, I wanna see all of Johnny's work that he did for math and just see all that math content together or all their literacy work or all their Mandarin work. Um, that only, from what I understand, stays together um, in the current live class that they have. So once it's archived, you kind of lose that type of sorting and searching for information. Also, the teachers kind of lose the ability to go back and look historically. Once a class is archived, a teacher of that class can't go back and look at the previous year's class to, to look at content. Or a teacher can't look at what a student in their current class did last year. Um, so those are some things that I see as, as uh, a little bit of a, a negative, but I don't know how much teachers really want to do that as well. As an administrator, I can go back and look at the archive classes. So if there's a particular teacher that really wants to see some work from a student from previous years, I can work with them and say, okay, let's go in, in, in my admin and I can sh you know show them some of that work. Um, before I say thank you, there, I mean, just hearing what a lot of other people have said, um, I can add a few things. Um, oh, where is it? Let me let me get out of this so I can go back to to seeing you guys. Um, just some ideas of different things that we were doing. I mean, one thing that we tried in kindergarten. Um, I don't remember what the video was, but we put up a video as, a, as an item, and then we had all the kids comment on what they thought about that video, what they learned, what they saw, what they noticed, um, as comments under that particular, um, let me see, am I still sharing here? Um, and it was interesting to see that so that kids then could then go back and, and hear or listen to other kids' comments as what they noticed and so forth. Parents could also watch the video and make their own comments so kids could see what their parents thought about things. So that was an interesting thing that we did. Um, different uh, Seesaw is, is really um, easy to post things up. We do a lot of things and explain everything with pic collage. So like something like pic collage, we can't, the kids can't add their own voice to that, but they make a pic collage, they add it up to, to uh, Seesaw, and then they can explain all the learning and all the things that they did with it as well. Um, Seesaw, it's, it's constantly um, evolving. Um, they're always, they're listening to the people that are using it. They, they really listen and try, if they're getting a lot of suggestions in a certain area, then they really try to work with adding that functionality back to that. Um, so things like the skills, they've also added in where teacher can, there's like a teacher only comment area. So if a teacher wants to comment on a particular piece of work to remind themselves about different things, only the teacher sees that comment. The parents won't see it, the kids won't see it. Um, one thing that we're, we're doing, <coughs> excuse me, uh, with our student-led conferences, um, in order to make that a little more efficient, we want them to use their Seesaw portfolios as part of their student-led conferences, but we, we give the kids a chance um, to prepare for their student-led conferences by looking back through their Seesaw portfolio and pulling out the highlight items that they want to really focus on and talk more about during their student portfolios. So we create a folder called highlights or, or 
conferences or whatever you want to call it and they just add those you know uh, tag those in that particular folder because they can be in more than one folder so that then when they do have their their parent or their student-led conferences they can just go to that folder and those items that they want to speak to are right there listed for them they can just go down through them and talk through those those items with their parent and, and explain and talk more about them um, the only problem with that is if an item is associated with more than one student, sometimes there's you know uh, music performances or PE demonstrations, and there's a couple kids involved. It'll be tagged to a couple of students. Um, if it's, if one of those students wants to highlight it for their for their conferences, if they put it into that highlights folder, it puts it into everybody's highlights folder that was tagged to it. So you can easily just make a copy of it and then put it into their own highlights so that way it just sticks with one student. Um, there was something else I was going to mention oh, and I can't remember what it is um, based on some of the comments that you guys were, were making. You might come up in a minute. Yeah. yeah. I, it, there might be a, a blue bar at the bottom of your screen to uh, stop sharing your screen. Oh, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so any questions, fire away. Yeah, the two IQ learning, learner profiles and attitudes um, as skills on uh, Seesaw? Um, I mean, it's just the one, and it's a pre-K class that's using the, the skills at this point. So they're, they're just experimenting with, you know, different types of skills that they're adding in there just to see how this whole thing works. But that's, I mean, definitely an area that they they could see, I could see using uh, the skills um, function as well. Um, also, do parents have access for, you know, to their, to their child's um, class after it's archived? Yes, the parents, when it's archived, the parents have access to all, all the content that has been added in that, into their student's account. Forever. Um, for yeah, forever. Okay. And as long as they are uh, an active parent. Oh, that was the other thing. Um, when student, like you, uh, we all get students that move on from our schools to other schools, their parents move and so forth. You can download all the content that is um, uh, that has been added uh, in a student's account. And I forget the the way the the type of file it is, but it's it's a very easy. Uh, manageable file that kids can you know you can see every item you can see a video you can see a picture um you know all that content is still there and is that being used in terms of moving from grade uh three to grade four where they move into the weebly blogs yeah um well the, we encourage the parents to download all the content so that they they have a record of all the content that that's there um it's not something that we kind of link to the students, you know, when they go into grade four, that there's some kind of link to all that content. We, we don't make that connection that way. Great. Cool. Fantastic. It, it's really great to hear um, your experience in, in, in that area, Bruce, with, you know, having gone through it. Did you say it was two years now? Yeah, this is our second year. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when they did the the focus group, um, I guess it was three years ago. Um, they identified seesaw as something that looked like a really valuable option, so they went. They did a, a very quick little pilot in the spring of that year with a grade two class. I think they did it for about a month, um, and the amount of positive response from again from all the stakeholders they got back from that, um, they decided to just jump in the following year and just let's you know use seesaw right from the start. Um, and so far, it's it's been a real success. I mean, we we really don't have uh, any complaints. And and in terms of especially with the lower elementary or lower primary sort of year levels, mm -hmm. um, there's so much you know in terms of learning capture, making visible what was previously invisible to the different stakeholders. There's so much in terms of scaffolding and and things that that I think Cecil makes so accessible and so easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. I was a bit surprised to learn that the, the teachers don't get to see the students' previous year's work. That was something we were actually hoping. We are about to start a trial of the school version. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping we'd have that because um, 
something we notice is sometimes when you hand over a group of kids, um, you get a sort of a, a lull, a period where teachers don't really know the students very well yet. Mm -hmm. Students don't really know the new teacher very well yet. Um, and we were hoping to smooth out that transition a bit by um, giving, letting the kids pick some things they want to show their new teacher. Um, yeah. The teacher share some things they'd love to show their, their new students. Maybe there are some creative ways of setting up classes so that you sort of, because you can put two teachers into a class, is that right? You can have sort of co-teachers? Yeah, you, um, yeah, I mean, with the full version, like we have classes that have 10 or 12 teachers because all the specialists are assigned into that class. So our art teacher, <coughs> excuse me, when they, they go up to art, the kids take the iPads up and she, I mean, she's one of our big contributors to the Seesaw account um, for the kids is the kids are putting a lot of stuff that they do in art up there. Same thing with Mandarin, with PE, all those things. So all those teachers are are linked into each separate class. Um, yeah, we're, we've been trying to think about how to do that well. It, the problem revolves around the way the whole database is set up, the way information is assigned to a class and and stuff like that. So once you... Um, it's all associated with a class. Um, it, it's just like from one year to the next, it's it's gets tricky into how a teacher could go back and look at a previous year, you know, information on a student. But it's something we're we're looking at as well, trying to come up with a solution. Something we've been in touch with with the people, the developers at Seesaw as well, but um, haven't found a good solution yet. I'm sorry, we have to run here. Uh, we all have to go, but I just want to thank everyone. Uh, you know, we're able to hear about everyone's experiences with it. And I've been jotting down some of the pros and the cons. And, uh, so now we have a better understanding. We can start looking at things uh, for next year. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. very helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, guys. It's always good to hear hear everybody's story. And, and like I said, we've been using it for a couple of years. We just have a little more experience. You guys have all come up with some great ideas that I'm learning from as well. But if you have any questions about any of this, you know, background stuff or any other questions that, that may come up that, that didn't come up uh, today, please don't hesitate to contact. I'd be happy to talk with everybody. Great. Thanks a lot, guys. Fantastic. So um, I guess this will end our KTX. Um, yeah. Have a good time. Cheers. <laughs>